what's going on guys welcome back to another video in this video we're gonna be looking at um the grand Ca mega campaign but we're in hoi 4 and the map looks a bit different because obviously the states in hoi 4 are a bit different major countries so we got florida france germany japan mexico scandinavia and rome so you know the, the normal ones and we got a couple factions here um we're gonna have a look at that in the factions mode and wow and I just wanted to show this off. So um, if when you do exit to menu, you can see the strongest nation. Right now it's Rome. They have a, they have the biggest navy out of any place, which we saw last time. Um, Mexico has the largest army here by far, actually. Um, Germany has a pretty large army. I think Rome and Germany are gonna start to like catch up to Mexico, because right now Mexico is not in volunteer only or in a disarmed nation. So as soon as um, Rome can get out of that disarmed nation, okay, they hate France as well. France is actually fine with Germany, even after all they did. And France is led by Manfred Ludendorff, who's the son of Eric Ludendorff. I'm pretty sure Ludendorff is a German name. So we got a German spy. And this guy also looks vaguely familiar, actually. I'm pretty sure if you look at it, you'll be able to tell who this is really is oh the germans are into this okay the germans are about to go to hold up hold hold up hold up i don't know if the lines of germany is gonna last here unless south tyrol falls here they are not pu they're not pushing here so germany might survive this if they don't they might not want to just they might just not want to get involved here well, I guess the Germans aren't getting involved just yet. I think the Russians like to go after the Germans. Um, let's have a look here. Japan. Alright, everybody hates Japan in this world, huh? Okay. That's how World War II breaks out, ladies and gentlemen. The thing is, right, obviously Germany may be able to push here, right? Florida cannot handle Mexico for too long. The Mexicans have a far larger army. And I have no idea why there are so many Scandinavians here. I think they are... Oh yeah, they're Floridas. They just look Scandinavian because the flag... Well, we did see six world wars in the last game. So, this is basically World War Seven or World War Eight. Well, Germany just um capitulated russia so um now they can really start to send help well hopefully send help to florida there are some german troops here so that's good or are these floridan troops See, the, i think there's a bug with florida because their map didn't load they just have random like really random ones so still waiting for um until the romans and the scandinavian Go after either the Germans or the, well, Mexicans. If they go after the Mexicans, well, um, it's gonna be pretty interesting, actually. I don't know what's gonna happen. There's a peace deal for the Mexican team, and Mexico's looking very weak now. They're looking like just Mexico and then California and a little bit more stuff, right? And it's mostly the alliance of, so it's basically just the alliance of Germany versus the alliance of Rome here. I don't know who's gonna win this. So if we look at the factions, it's very even right now. I went away for a little bit and interesting things have happened. For one, Germany has capitulated here. France is getting absolutely wrecked. Paris has fallen. Uh, Marseille, is that how you say it? Marseille um, is the capital. So it's around the end of 1938 and so it's only been one year. Wow, they capitulated Germany in less than a year. Okay, so that's the peace deal. The Romans took a lot here. Um, the Scandinavians puppeted France here. Germany did take stuff from the peace deal. Now, that's where I'm confused. How did Germany... Okay, I guess Germany did get stuff. So, Germany is back. The Byzantines have naval supremacy everywhere. Wow, they basically control the sea. Okay, this is by far the fastest... Hoi 4 game I've ever seen because normally you know in Hoi 4 
the action starts in 1939. Let's have a look at the war. So there's only one war left. Um, and let's have a look by casualties here. Right away, I see Rome there. Scandinavia taking nearly half a million casualties. Tibet with another 150,000. Like, the population of Tibet is probably not 150,000. The war is going very slow. Like, I think it's not the war that's going slow. It's my game. I'm getting... The Mexicans are any day about to go. Same with the Germans. They've been at banished to Madagascar here. This whole thing ended up taking as a normal Hoi 4 game just because of how slow it was running. So there's the peace conference. Um, uh, I, I missed it, but I guess I missed it. But I think Scandinavia ended up taking more states. So let's have a look at the map here. So right away, Japan has been split. Between they have the normal island and they're a puppet of Rome. Korea has been split between Korea, Wu, and Qi. Chu controls China. China is still there though, technically. Yeah, so that's um Japan and stuff. Now let's have a look at like the rest of the stuff. So Germany is still alive. Um they're a Scandinavian puppet and oh my god. Yeah, they're a Scandinavian puppet. Um, Russia's here. I'm assuming they're, uh, yeah, they're a Byzantine puppet. And so, but Germany's looking really powerful here. It's kind of like, I think Scandinavia has, like, France and Germany under their wing. Let's have a look at Florida. Um, they are a Scandinavian puppet. Byzantine, Louisiana, yeah, that would be kind of weird if they weren't. And the Empire of Mexico is also a Byzantine puppet. Um, most of South Africa is controlled by Scandinavia, like Luba is a Scandinavian puppet. So I know like um, a lot of people will probably want me to do kind of like uh, continue this until there's only one nation left in Hoi 4. See, I know what you guys are thinking, right? Like Rome looks slightly stronger here. And, but it's pretty balanced for the most part, right? But Rome looks slightly stronger, sure. But the thing is, when you look at the stats, 11 million men in the field, 5.5 in the air, and then they have a smaller navy. Now, when we look at Rome, right? Let's have a look, all right? Seven, uh, 7.25 million in the army, uh, army so smaller. The air is just amount, as much, and, the, and then they have a double amount. They have 4 million more men. Right, so this is the final like thing here. Let's have a look who was the winner. Okay, so it's very close between Rome and Scandinavia. Scandinavia has less divisions. Oh, they must be pumping out divisions that take more manpower instead of just a normal infantry. So maybe that's why. So they are still much stronger militarily. So this is kind of not true germany kept all of its divisions i don't know if that's a bug or something most places yeah are authoritarian monarchies here and the strongest is a scandinavian hegemony the lines of mexico apparently they have a lot of people here so maybe you know i'll include them in defcon so um we'll see in defcon all right guys we're now in defcon and this is what the map looks like um, this game is very interesting in the fact that, um, it's not really, there's, it's not really based on units and stuff. It's just whoever, like, um, survives with the least casualties. Now, in this map, you might notice there's some couple blank spaces. And I did this because earlier, there used to be a different, there used to be just like, th these are just the places that aren't controlled by Rome or Scandinavia. Like, they had their own faction in the game. So, in my test, like, um, they never won, right? They did, they did okay sometimes, but they never won. But then as soon as I start recording, they win every single game. And the reason I didn't count those games is because it's kind of unrealistic, I think, that they would win. Because obviously in-game, they could easily get rolled over by even like the even like Germany, which is part of the Scandinavian faction. The pro Another problem was that Roman Scandinavia, right, they didn't have that much of a presence, like navally at least, in Asia. So the the um free states was what i call them they could just like have do whatever they want over here and for some reason cambodia is removed um that's weird but yeah they could do whatever they want and they got like way more points than everybody else we're already in defcon one here 
and this is when the action starts because that's when the nukes come. You can see that um, um, the nukes are rolling in. Rome, off the bat, is doing much better. That can obviously change here, but we have to see which navy gets destroyed first. The Roman navy seems most gone. They have a couple here. This navy is gonna probably get wrecked by the Scandinavians. That's what it looks like here. And same with this one because, well, actually, maybe not because they survived with way more. Over here, though, um, the Roman navy is gone, right? They're running away. Oh, wow, that's a very nice naval battle here. The Scandinavians do look like they won that one. Actually, both navies look completely devastated by those attacks here. Neither or both are really left. The Scandinavians are pursuing the remaining Roman submarines over there. Both submarine, uh, so the sub, the Scandinavian submarine force is going after the Roman battleship force. I wonder who's gonna win this submarines versus battleship. The the battle of a century here. As well, the nukes are coming in, but not right now. The nukes more come in a lot later in the game, so we'll watch out for that here. And it looks like they just completely missed each other because these are submarines, I guess. So I guess they weren't able to see them. Oh, another Scandinavian nuke is coming. Looks like it's gonna go for this Roman silo, but it was shot down. Very interesting to see here. Oh, there go the civilian nukes. Launches are being detected from all sides here. Laun nukes are flying everywhere. Roman nukes, Scandinavian nukes, everywhere they're flying. Oh, a Scandinavian nuke is about to hit. Couple Roman nukes here, actually. Holy cow. Couple Scandinavian nukes over there as well. When they hit, we're gonna see. Oh wow! Okay, they hit a lot of people over there, and they're not stopping. Holy cow! Um, the Scandinavians are wrecking the Romans here, but the Romans are gonna start getting back because China is not very well defended. I think Scandinavians have come back big time here. For my test, Rome actually won more, so that's cool to see here. Yeah, the the Scandinavians are just drilling in. The the Roman defeat here. The Roman navy, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, looks like that was a Scandinavian hit, but that probably killed a bunch of Roman people too. Here, the Romans are like stopping the Scandinavian advance, but I think at this point, probably too late. I think we can probably call the Scandinavians one. They're winning by a hundred and sixty points here. If we have a look, we can see the stats exactly. If you look at the deaths here. Um, 60 million to 35 million, I think that's a pretty good value, um, to stay on here. I think that's because if you look at the population, um, the Romans had a lot of population here. The, their population is completely gone. It's just Italy and, um, obviously the Balkans, which are still safe here. Everybody else, basically all the Romans are, um, gone. And the game should be ending soon. There should be a victory timer pretty soon. Honestly, I think it's a shame that I couldn't include the free state because like what they did was all honestly all, all, a lot of the time pretty interesting. But they started with like basically the same navy, sometimes even bigger than the Romans and the Scandinavians here. And they just took out any like sometimes there were some Romans here, but they completely took out any Romans still left. And it was just not fair. So I think um, this is a more realistic ending. Although the Romans might come back here because they are getting a lot of hits on India. Holy moly. These, this Roman um, battle, like, the, the, the Roman fleet has, like, linked up and they are just hitting India. They are completely destroying India. Holy, somebody's got to stop them. They might make a comeback. Holy cow. That was a lot of damage they did to India there. India's population is like gone after that. You guys saw just now I showed how how many people were in India. They're just all dead. Every single one is gone. That is so sad. How did the Romans get their navy back that quickly? This, at least they're not going to end with a negative score. That would have been a shame. The Scandinavians probably have a lot more deaths now. Yeah, I didn't I did expect that. The Romans though like did a lot of collateral damage. Scandinavians were kind of careful about that. And... The game's about to end in 18 units of time. I don't know what units of time they use here. Because that's definitely not one second. Because one second is way long, shorter than that. We're both out of nukes um, here. So the Romans can't really do much more. 
the Scandinavians are getting their fleet over here. Um, that's kind of sad to see. I know there's a lot of Byzantophiles, right? They're like, but it was interesting to see Rome did pretty good. And honestly, at the end there, they, they did some pretty serious damage. Um, that was a very good fight, and that was a very fun series to do. Probably won't be doing anything like that for, like, a couple of months, because there's, like, new updates coming to, like, all the games, and, like, EU4 apparently got a really bad update, and then, obviously, um, Victoria 3 is announced, which I think I mentioned in my Victoria video that they should make a Victoria 3, but that's very fun, and it looks like a very good game, so you guys should like wishlist it on Steam as well and stuff. But that's all for this video and this series, um, I'm not gonna take this into Stellaris, cause I don't actually have Stellaris, but yeah, um, but yeah, so if you did enjoy, you can hit that like and subscribe button, and um, if you want to get notified for videos, you can hit the notification bell. You probably know all that stuff. You should see some videos like popping up on the screen recommending some videos. I might actually do a Hoi 4 like playthrough, which I've only done once before and I, I record it. And I'm, I'm really bad at Hoi 4. It has a very steep learning curve. And it'll be like a real gameplay, like not just AI only. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. But other than that, that's all. Bye.